publisher in the Black Scholar magazine. He also publishes a journal, the Black Male-Female Relationships, and has written extensively in the field of psychology. He has combined the fields of sociology and clinical psychology and holds two PhDs from two different universities, one from the University of Chicago and the other from uh, Berkeley. Dr. Nathan Hare uh, has made a commitment to studying the intense uh, psychotherapeutic needs of black people and he is going to give us just a crumb or two tonight in his presentation. I chose Dr. Hare because I wanted someone who could present us with some perspective on what we feel is the most pressing issue in our community nationwide, and that is the relationships, the growth of positive relationships between black men and black women. So tonight I present to you Dr. Nathan Hare. Thank you, Sister uh, Gibson. I'm going to take this off. And uh, distinguished members of the, is it working? No. Short Short Support now? Is it working now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll leave it there. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Is that better? Okay. Okay. Is that okay? Good. Uh, I want to also give greetings to uh, this, the distinguished members of the platform, uh, the uh, vice president, who I understand has to leave early, mm -hmm. uh, the students who have been working so hard, uh, George Jackson, who uh, has a very uh, tough name to live up to. Mm -hmm. Does anybody here remember George Jackson? Of, Soledad prison fame. <laughs> yeah. well, see, it's, it's not all lost. Not as bad as I thought it was. And um, the brother who did so well today, I'm told, in teaching you the art and philosophy, the theory and practice of creativity. Of course, we as a race, as a people, are known for our creativity. Nobody can say, for instance, that we aren't creative in the arts, in singing and dancing. We can do that better than anybody else. I remember the time when they used to say that uh, the idea that black people could dance better than white people was a stereotype. But now you know that uh, nobody can, nobody is more pathetic than a white person trying to dance. <laughs> so we will. <we're, laughs> uh, <laughs> So, so we, we are learning. <laughs> In fact, they, they used to say that it was a stereotype. They still say it's a stereotype. Somebody said today that uh, the black male is sexually superior. Now, I, I don't want to fall into uh, <laughs> the, uh, any exaggerations here. However, uh, maybe there's not any biology to back it up, as the, the white uh, master tried to proclaim in order to frighten Miss Muffet away. However, it's backfired on him because uh, I'm told that uh, it whetted the appetite, the curiosity of some of the women. And of course, uh, the white man believed it himself, began to believe it. And as much as these things are in the mind, many of the things revolving around sex in the mind, uh, it has contributed to the uh, increase in the impotency rate, which uh, he is exhibiting these days. But I, I think that we should begin to uh, acknowledge and cherish uh, any uh, excellent, any area of excellence uh, that we have achieved, uh, especially given the way in which they have tried to keep us down. So I know that there are psychosocial cultural forces uh, behind it, but the fact rem remains that the uh, black male excels in athletics, the black male excels in dancing, and sex is a form of both athletics athletics and dancing, uh, so uh, it uh, probably has some merit to it. 
So uh, it's good that the brother is teaching us about uh, creativity. But because we, even though we are good in all those things, we seem to lack creativity when it comes to, to uh, the, the field of, of uh, education, uh, of excellence, that is, of, of uh, intellect. We seem to be sometimes too, at, even anti-intellectual. And I think that we need to raise excellence in the field of education to the same level as we have raised excellence in the field of music and athletics and that sort of thing. We need a Muhammad Ali and Arthur Ashe and, and Althea Gibson and all of the black men and women who have excelled in, in those areas in the field of uh, intellectual uh, life as well. Uh, we have dominated the uh, boxing heavyweight championship for 40 of the last 44 years. Something like 10 of the la last 11 years we've had the Heisman Trophy won in football. I don't even have to mention to you uh, the area of, foot, of basketball. But nevertheless, I think that we need to begin to spread some of this excellence and creativity around. So I'm, good to, it's, I'm glad to see that the brother uh, was here uh, trying to help you to do that. And I also want to acknowledge uh, Mrs. Hare, who has been most creative in many ways. <laughs> Who, Mrs. Hare, who has taught me more about uh, male-female relationships than anybody else, certainly, <laughs> and, and, and is, is most diligent in, that, uh, uh, diligent in that pursuit. So I just want to, uh, you know, say that I'm very pleased to be here, very pleased to see so many of you come from so many states. It's one thing to come on the next town or two, but to brave all this snow, we don't even let this this much white thing, uh, uh, substance uh, hit the ground in California. <laughs> so to see all of this, all of you come from from all these states, uh, is quite a, an inspiration, quite an impressive thing. I'm also pleased to see you enjoying yourself so much, to see you enjoying yourself so much at the luncheon, trying to figure out how to choose a beautiful black uh, male, a beautiful black female, finding out in the male-female relationships uh, meeting that you might have something to learn about that. <laughs> so it goes on and on. I'm also pleased to uh, see you revive the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, oh boy, the, the national uh, black anthem. I'm just almost as bad. You get up here and see way out here in Iowa, and you can easily get to thinking you're white. <laughs> <laughs> It's a long way from home. <laughs> but, uh, nevertheless, I was glad to see you sing the Star Spangled. Oh, <laughs> really got it bad. <laughs> and I, the Black National Anthem. See, the problem is that they, we used to call it Negro, and I couldn't, uh, uh, you know, quite get the Negro because we put that aside. It seemed like we we're drifting back to the same kind of person. Nevertheless, we put it aside. And in fact, I remember some of you were here. Some of you are, who are here, uh, including. Uh, uh, Norris uh, from the University of Oklahoma. Uh, uh, remember that I came down there about seven to eight, and you were trying to decide then uh, whether to, whether to call yourself in that particular state Black Political Union or Pan African Political Union. And I made the point that uh, uh, why don't you just call it African? Because uh, to say Pan African was to modify African or to qualify African. And why don't you just call it African? And somebody said, Well, we have an African Student Union on the campus. We have and the Africans from the continent might not want to have it called African. I say, well, I see you have an Asian student conference, and to call a uh, black person, an African person in America, or to call African people in America blacks, is like calling Asians in America yellows. <laughs> but I see that you still cannot not get uh, to that. <laughs> because we forget too quickly. So it's, it's good that you at least tried to sing the star. I just say that at least you tried to sing the, the black national anthem, or maybe the African national anthem. Maybe we'll have one one of these days. But I, I saw how some of you were so proud because you knew some of the words. I'm sitting up there and singing out loud. I couldn't even hear my, the people next to me were singing so well. Then the others who, who couldn't uh, sing it at all uh, really were pathetic. <laughs> You should be ashamed of yourself. 
as long as you wouldn't have any trouble singing the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> so we have a lot to learn. And I think that it's, it's very important that you are doing this in the uh, month that we have dedicated to Black History Month. Because a people that refuses to learn from its uh, past is doomed to repeat it. And of course, we keep uh, repeating ourselves over and over again. Reagan is causing more and more people now to talk more and more about the 60s, but still nobody seems to remember, remember it anymore, especially the, uh, the people of your age. You're about the age of the students at Howard University when I went there in 1961, stayed there in 1967 as a teacher of sociology, and you uh, probably, I was thinking just sitting here, that you're probably the children of those uh, students, of the kind of student we had then. And it was hard to get them to, to learn <laughs> very much, and I hope that it, it won't be the same thing uh, with you. I ran into, or we ran into Bobby Seale in the Milwaukee airport today. He used to be national chairman of the Black Panther Party. And I was getting ready to get something to eat for breakfast, but I lost my appetite seeing him alone and almost forgotten. And yet people are going on hucklebucking and foxtrotting and, and discoing and uh, uh, got their transistors bigger than their heads are wide, uh, walking around feeling that they are free. So I think that it's very fitting that we are going to talk about survival tonight, even though um, in the 60s we seem to have gone to another level of struggle. Survival is only one level of struggle. Another level, and maybe the higher level, or the, uh, the, or the highest level of struggle, is resistance. So we've let our struggle slip back, and we have to try to get it back again. Now, I'm told that I'm to speak on strategies of uh, survival, and that also gives me a little bit of a, a pause, because I feel uh, that sometimes we start on the wrong end. Because a strategy, if you look in the dictionary, is only an approach to achieving a goal. And while a tactic is merely an instance or a variation of a strategy, we seem not to understand that. And so we're always starting on the wrong end. You started in the panel on male-female relationships today when people wanted to have tactics and wanted to have a formula for working out individual problems. Uh, when actually uh, what we need is to understand where we're going, what it is that we really want, what kind of society we, we want to build and live in. And then if we can get clear what the goal is to know where we're going, then maybe we can get that better. In fact, there's an old African proverb which holds that if you don't know where you're going, you'll probably wind up somewhere else. And so we certainly are African people, <laughs> although we seem to have forgotten that too. And this will uh, continue to plague us. So I don't, I don't like much to deal with strategies and tactics, even though certainly uh, they are important. And I could do it, you know, if I had to. During the 1960s, we did it all. And we, we had the problem, for instance, of getting a black studies program. And we... Uh, couldn't get one because of the um, politics of the place. And so the administrator said that we couldn't get it. I'm just watching all this as a sociologist. Actually, the students were doing it. I'm trying to take credit in retrospect. Uh, the uh, administration said, uh, told the students, assured the students that they couldn't get a black status department because the trustees would have to approve it, and they wouldn't be meeting until two or three months later. So what the students did was ask the administrators to talk about it, and so in those days you would not let uh, cut your hair off and wouldn't comb it half the time to try to look bad and mean. <laughs> so uh, when they got ready to go to this uh, meeting, they uh, took out the, the ones with the longest uh, twirled up hair. Some guys just twirled it out of nervousness, and they just all hadn't washed it in a, in a long time and certainly hadn't combed it in t two or three years. <laughs> and so the, 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 the strategy was that everybody would be quiet and look mean, uh, not laugh at the administrator's jokes or anything, just look mean as you could. Meanwhile, uh, they had chosen two leaders, two spokespersons, 
in those days it, it uh, tended to be men. Well, that's a whole other story. Uh, but uh, they uh, certainly were doing the job at that time. And so uh, the, the two men who would be the spokesmen uh, were to take two different roles. What we wanted was a black studies department, uh, so the moderate student would ask for that, and then the militant student would ask for a whole school of black studies. <laughs> and then uh, we would accept, of course, uh, the black studies department. So they had set it up around a t to meet in a conference table. So the students got in early and sat every other student, which forced administrators to, to sit, not be next to each other and to lose their sense of security. <laughs> also, they couldn't compare notes and they didn't say, what, what did you do, what did they really do? <laughs> so that uh, rocked on for a while, and, and finally uh, they kept saying they couldn't gi give what the moderate wanted, and, and the Milton kept on uh, using rhetoric, and, and the moderate said, be quiet now, we're trying to get this. And so finally the Milton struck a match to the trash can and slid it across the floor, and, and we got a black studies department just like that. <laughs> But, but I don't want to suggest that you can use that tactic here and now. Uh, see, the problem about tactics is that it may, be, it may not fit a given time and place. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you ask for tactics, if you ask for specifics, then you will not understand the generality. And then you have to keep on either asking somebody else for the specifics since you don't know how to generate them, or you'll either uh, keep on using the wrong uh, specific. Now, uh, I can give you an example. Like at Cornell University, they uh, had some students put on some guns with, with, empty, with bullets uh, as part of the out of, out of costume. No bullets in the chamber. And they marched, took the old building and marched to something. And they put them on the cover of Time magazine. Thought it was cute, these nice little middle class uh, black kids doing this e extreme nonviolent uh, technique of demonstrating without a, a, a loaded weapon. Now, if the black students at San Francisco State College had tried that, uh, they would have thought they were serious, and they would have welcomed the chance to, to open up on them in return. <laughs> in, in fact, the students uh, uh, used that once, and the white liberals came asking what they could do to help the white liberal students. One black student leader said, why don't you guys take over that building? And so they went up there, they were puffing up there and slobbering up there to take over the building. And they got up there in the tactical squad, which is some big old police. We never saw anything. They're twice as big as the, uh, the big ones you see. And the club <laughs> twice as big with the pistols. And so they, they got up there, and uh, they put that, those big pistols on, on them. And, uh, and so the black students do not try that themselves. So I want to try to help you to understand the generality, though we, we, of course, won't have a lot of time to do it. Of course, time is running out for us in general, us as a people, even though we still have a long way to go. But even in a short while, if you can begin to understand the generality, then you uh, can, uh, of course, uh, maybe work it out as you uh, go along. I think the problem uh, these days is that uh, uh, we have fallen into what uh, many philosophers have complained about for generations, uh, even centuries, which is the tendency of the slave to get tripped up by the practice of trying to gain recognition from the master. And our tendency also to let the uh, master uh, decide what it is, therefore, that we will think, to wait, uh, to get our ideas and to get our direction and our signals. And I don't have to tell you that we are living in a time now of extreme peril. We not only have uh, the economy falling and uh, things in a state of moral and, and uh, social and personal decay, uh, but we also uh, s seem on the verge, even, of a uh, war of social values, which is being played out by somebody else, played out by two white tribes, that is, the, the liberals uh, on the one hand, the white liberals on the one hand, and the uh, more, more majority on the other. And another African proverb is that it, it is the grass that suffers when two elephants fight. <laughs> That, that I think that there's also, and so we keep on suffering while we let them decide our fate. Even the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment were two, was, were the result of a, an argument between the northern and southern white tribes. And they, uh, it's like they kidnapped us from Africa and then turned around and said that we're going to make you, you citizens and didn't even give you the vote, uh, the right to vote on it or anything, and so you don't, you shouldn't be surprised that you don't have citizenship yet. 
because uh, the master cannot free the slave. And so this is what we are faced with uh, today. Well, I had a whole bunch of tactics uh, worked out here, but uh, I see uh, the clock is moving on. So I just want to try to help to understand uh, the problem. I think that one of the greatest uh, social tragedies that we are faced with as a result of this, you've already alluded to, which is that uh, not only of the conflict, the war conflict and, and disillusionment and uh, disunity between the male and female, but also a, a growing isolation, an emotional and personal isolation of the black uh, female. The reason uh, for this grows out of the inability of the white feminists to uh, address uh, it themselves to the needs of the, the black woman and black women's liberation. Yet uh, we have failed, and, and even black women have failed, to try to define these things for themselves aside from some amount of uh, falling into the same uh, trenches with the, the white woman. This, I think, is, is a very dismaying thing. I, don't, I think it's no accident that the black, white feminists have not been able to address themselves to the needs of the black woman because we operate on two different planes. One is that the uh, white race has a woman problem while the black race has a woman problem and a man problem. The solution to the white woman's uh, problem is simple. She has only to raise herself to the level of her man. If the uh, black woman does that and the black man is not brought along simultaneously, then the black woman will find that she is worse than her problems and that she will look around to find that there is no man to, to stand beside her. This is uh, what is going on now when we have forgotten that the future of the black woman uh, is with the black man just as the future of the black man is with the black woman. Well, uh, we had already been warned in, 19, in the 1960s that whenever an oppressed people begins to de develop a revolutionary consciousness, the liberal oppressor always comes over to introduce uh, this duality. When what a, an oppressed people needs, above all, is a singularity of purpose. And so I think that it is we uh, who will be the ones, we as a race, who will be the ones to, to solve the problems of uh, black women. And we have to begin to incorporate the idea of black women's liberation into the black movement as a whole, uh, but not so as to take the place of it. We also will have to begin to do something about the uh, problems of the black male's inability to thrive in a society uh, that is sexist and racist and which needs above all to suppress uh, the, the black male. I mean in the sense that uh, in a society which is both sexist and racist, which is patriarchal where the males rule, it is not the female that poses the primary threat to the, to the white male in his mind, but the, the male, the, the black male who can take his place in the bedroom or in the uh, marketplace or whatever. <laughs> And so he has to uh, take pains to keep him down. But uh, this doesn't mean that he is going to free the wo black woman either. He also does not uh, want to free the, he does not want the black woman to be a woman any more than he wants the black man to be a man. Because a, a, a person cannot be a slave and a full human being at the same time. So, uh, so long as we're not free, a black female cannot be a woman. Now, however, the white people define that any more than a black male can be a man. However, that is defined, and they can change the rules of the game and change the definitions, but it, it still will not uh, uh, change the fact that we are not free. It still will not eliminate the fact that the black woman is uh, falling into despair and uh, feeling alone, uh, feeling deserted, facing uh, 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 increasingly the dilemma she, she feels between trying to get ahead in life and at the same time feeling that she's leaving the males behind and that she will not have one to go around when she gets there because of the fact that they're more, they're what another race is doing to the black, her, her male, the black male. We have more black males in prison than in college, even though it, it costs more to send one there, to keep one there, than to send them to Harvard. Uh, we are the most imprisoned uh, nation in the world and the black male is the most imprisoned uh, person within that, uh, within our nation. Although, of course, the black woman is, 
is highly present too, and it's infinitely more likely to be in prison than the, than the black, than the white female. So this is the, the, the problem that we face. If you look at mental health statistics, you find this same uh, problem going on, where uh, the, the, the black female suffers a high uh, mental health rate in the early adult life, where the challenge is to make a satisfactory love adjustment. And so she sen tends to fall short there and to suffer uh, uh, the uh, exacerbation of her mental health rates. The uh, black male suffers later uh, in life when the challenge is to make a contribution to society equal to your potential. And th this, is, this is not surprising to me because if there is a difference between male and female, uh, th that is the biological difference between male and female, which pivots on their, their, which has psychological implications, then it is that the, the female is the, the receiver in the sexual encounter. Now, we were learning today, and you already knew, it seemed, that uh, she does not have to wait and sit back, that she can be active, she does not have to be passive. Nevertheless, if she does not arouse the male, then there is no action. And so, understandably, uh, in comparison with the male, that is her anxiety. Uh, now, this strikes the, the, the black female with a double whammy. It strikes her in, in the heart <coughs> or the essence of her need to feel desired and desirable. Uh, and this is compounded by the fact that the white race does not wish to recognize and extol her beauty in the same way they do their own, own women. And this was uh, uh, something that you were concerned about today. But I be believe that the black female does not even recognize her own beauty. Uh, now, I understand, as you know, as you, those of you who are in the workshop, uh, uh, the full peril of the white female in coming over to rip off the, the, uh, the black, uh, leading black males. But I think that uh, in 98 percent of the cases, it's not the, black, it's not the white female who's making it hard for you to keep your man at home, but the, in 98 percent of the cases, it's the beauty of another black woman or some other black women who are making it hard for you to keep your man at home. So uh, if the black woman does not understand her own beauty, then it's hard for her to impart that to her son uh, or her daughter. And I think this has got to be recognized and, and we have to begin to do that. Now in the case of the male, the black male also suffers a double whammy because uh, the, the uh, challenge of the male in the sexual encounter is to gain and hold his potency. But in as much as the, uh, and this is of course is, is his anxiety, so much so that uh, this can cause impotence in itself, the, the psychological anxiety and struggle around that. But in as much a, a, as the ability of a male to attract a woman may pivot as much on his social power, his social position, his social potency, as on his physical and personal charms, the black uh, male suffers a double whammy. Uh, what I mean by uh, the social potency of a m male being attracted to a female as over against his physical and personal charms can be exemplified uh, uh, by uh, people like, uh, uh, say, Henry Kissinger, who can be sex objects, while uh, Bella Abzug cannot. Uh, Samuel Davis Jr., as I said today, and, uh, say, uh, Barbara Jordan and Curly Chisholm. So this... Uh, <coughs> exacts on the black male a double whammy as well. And that block from the avenues of social power, he may overcompensate in the uh, sexual arena. So we'll have to begin to address ourselves to these problems. Now, I don't want anybody to go away uh, believing that I am, uh, when I say that we need to address ourselves as well, not only, uh, not only to the liberation of the black female, but also to the liberation of the black male, that I'm trying to move us backwards I think that uh, what I'm trying to do is to stop us from slipping backwards and to understand uh, the seriousness and the complexity of our uh, problem, a problem which has the, the, the black female raising her medi relative median income since uh, the feminist movement began, but at the same time raising her relative suicide rate because of the fact that she's the only one doing either one of those things. The white woman has not raised her relative income relative to the white man, she's gotten some token jobs, but she spread them around among her many, and the white man continued to get his, which he was his plan all along. 
while the, the black woman only got a few crumbs, but relative to the black male since the feminist movement, she has moved up tremendously, as you know, uh, comparatively speaking, in terms of the rate of growth there. And this is further isolated her. And so it uh, emerges, apparently, that uh, to elevate the female without elevating the uh, male simultaneously is uh, suicidal. And I think that we cannot uh, deny that. I think we cannot no longer look to uh, somebody else to set our agenda for us. This is why I've urged us to use the uh, fictive approach, which means, the fictive approach means that everything that the white race brings to us, so long as we're not free, is to be regarded as fiction until proven fact. And you who uh, are students in the university occupy a very crucial position in uh, carrying out this, this approach uh, because uh, you will be the leaders, or at least the leading black people of the future. Black students used to uh, think that it was revolutionary to not go to class and not try to uh, get out of school and not stay with the quote white campus or whatever. Uh, but not knowing that it was counter-revolutionary to flunk out and that you can't have a revolution as quiet as it's kept without ignorance, or with, without intelligence, or with ignorance. And as a matter of fact, you find that most of the revolutionaries, including Marx, uh, went to school quite a while. So this is uh, something that uh, I'm glad that you are recognizing, which is a crucial role that you are playing in trying to organize to problem set up. Uh, I don't want Many of you have been successful at that all along, but I never will forget uh, the way in which I myself was able to do it. It was a little harder back in those days, it seemed, because we had no special programs and no sympathy even. In fact, they seemed to be dumb until proven the other way around. And so I had a, a practice of, I saw they liked footnotes, and so I would go in and, and try to amass a whole bunch of footnotes, spend about five minutes getting something to quote, and then I'd have six to ten every, on a, each page as my rule of thumb. And the professor would say, well, I'm very impressed by your uh, reading, because he assumed I read the whole book in every case. And I would say thanks and, and receive the A. <laughs> uh, once when, uh, in the end there, when I was trying to pass the comprehensive exam, uh, they had asked uh, me to uh, compare the contributions of uh, two social theorists named Talcott Parsons and uh, Robert Merton in their contribution to a general theory of social action. Well, I knew a lot about uh, Parsons, or Brother Merton, and didn't know anything about uh, Parsons. So I latched into Merton, and then I concluded that I, Merton did not begin to develop a general theory of social action, not to mention Parsons. <laughs> so, so you'll have to use your, your ingenuity uh, uh, and your creativity. And the brother here would, would uh, of course, be able to fill you, fill you in on that rather than falling into despair, going off in things like celibacy, uh, 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 crude, uh, 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 improper, uh, 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 polygamy, the kind of polygamy which you have not even studied, don't even know how it works, have lost your, your rituals, your ceremonies, your norms about it, and get it backwards. Uh, one, one brother has even advocated omnigamy, uh, where, uh, where everybody is married to everybody else. <laughs> And uh, another one pointed out that uh, since, since everything is, is getting so bad, he might as well go ahead and, and, and uh, do that, or just do your own thing, because 50% of the marriages are failing, and it seems like everybody who's in it is trying to get out of it. On the other hand, everybody who is out of it is trying to get in it. We're the most marrying uh, nation on the earth and also the most divorcing. So it seems that something is wrong for both white and black, and that if uh, this was happening to the chitlings or the hamburgers, that if 50% of them were spoiling, then the government would, would pass laws against it, or the public lease would be up in arms about it. But instead, you sit back and let the, the white people uh, set your standards for your values. They cannot do that. We are the ones who will show the way, uh, which will benefit them indirectly, perhaps, but we are the ones who will show the way to them. You can look at something like ecology as I wind up uh, here. Uh, as an example of the way in which white people cannot show us the way uh, in that the master cannot free the slave. 
when they deal with ecology, they seek to uh, change, uh, solve the physical and chemical environment to save the bald eagle, uh, to uh, save the blue whale, or the, uh, the landscape of the mountainside, or the smog. But our uh, environmental problems, we suffer that too, even more than they do, from the physical environment and the chemical environment. But we also suffer from the social environment, uh, the polluted occupational strata, the crowded conditions, the high crime distances which victimize us. Uh, black women, for instance, are the victims of rape in eight out of ten of the cases, let, yet we let the white women use this as a, as a means to try to get public sympathy and, and attention to their cause as, as feminists. They calculated many years ago and found out that the capability, or the probability rather, of a, uh, or the chance even, of a white woman being raped, say by a black man, was about as great as her chances of being, uh, probability of being struck by a bolt of lightning. <laughs> and yet uh, they uh, issued this cry while we uh, turn our backs on this problem basically between males and females, black males and females, a problem in our relationships, in our conflicts. We have homicide being a problem among us. The black woman being twice as likely to kill the, uh, the black man as the black man is to kill her, but she does it in self-defense. He, he says most of the time. Uh, but real, the real problem of homicide being the, uh, the fact that the black, young black males are killing each other, often over their conflicts with the women. So we have to begin to address these problems and not turn our backs from them and to understand that we may never outstrip the white man in the making of machines or shooting of guns, but that we can provide the lost uh, spirituality if we understand that uh, even though the white man has all this technological excellence, which we had, which we had several minutes trying to get uh, adjusted to up here, <laughs> and yet if we understand that this very thing which has allowed him to dominate the rest of the, uh, the world is also the very thing which will trip him up, or which is tripping him up already. And there's a reason for that, because uh, what he did was use the machine to control the environment. But if you control the environment, you, he also distorted the environment. He became anti-environment. He, uh, he, so he's even destroying his, uh, the stratosphere, not, not to mention the landscape. But in becoming anti-environment, he also became anti-nature. Uh, but as much as human beings are also a part of nature, he became anti-human. So we'll have to begin to, 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 to understand that, that we are the, uh, the chosen ones. We are the ones who will uh, have to show the way because our minds are not so poisoned by the myths and passions of racism and the conditions under which we live demand that we inevitably seek some kind of uh, new society. So I'm going to wind up here, uh, thanks to, to uh, the brothers over there. We had, I guess you learned at school what you call uh, the Pavlov experiment. Uh, where you had to, uh, so Russians got some puppets together and, and when the clock, they started ringing a bell at a certain time and every time they rang the bell, you would have some uh, slobbering going on on the part of the puppets. <laughs> First they gave them food uh, and then when, when the bell started ringing they'd, get, they'd slobber even when they didn't have any food left. So this is what you have going on over here. But I'm going to wind up here. <laughs> yeah. this, this is... This is a clear uh, demonstration of the fact that our biggest problem is not with the black female, but with the black male. So I, I have uh, written something here I want to wind up with, uh, presenting to you. It's only a couple of paragraphs, even though it's called I'm a Black Man, and I've been going around presenting it, trying to uh, give the black man a, a new uh, ins a vision. I nevertheless, uh, nevertheless wrote it in an effort to try to reassure the, the black woman. Uh, what uh, had happened was that a black woman who wrote a book of poetry uh, about a man who had done her wrong and then moved to Africa, uh, she had asked me to write this introduction to a book of poetry, knowing that I was not a poet, but that I uh, was concerned with this issue. And so she asked me as a psychologist and sociologist to uh, write the introduction. And even though I'm not a poet, just as you... Uh, or not quite when you come to Iowa, you might get to thinking that. When you get to writing an introduction, it seems, to somebody's book of poetry, you may get to thinking for an end that you are a poet. So, but I was just tr trying to say something to reassure the black woman that the black man will rise again, 
and that the black man can't get up out of his uh, bed and walk. So I concluded uh, that uh, the, the evidence of anthropology now suggests that I, the black man, am the original man, the first man to walk this vast, imponderable earth. I, the black man, am an African, the exotic quintessence of universal blackness. I have lost by force my land, my language, in a sense my life. I will seize it back, so help me. Toward that end, if necessary, I will crush the corners of the earth, and this world will surely tremble until I, the black man, the first and original man, can arm and arm with my woman erect among the peoples of the universe a new society humane to its cultural core, out of which at long last will emerge as night moves into day, the first truly human being that the world has ever known. Thank you. announcements. The workshops will start in the morning at 10.30 and the breakfast will start